to start by asking the question, who in the room today believes that recovery is real, that it really happens for people? You know, the whole room full of noise makers, I bet you can do better than that. Who believes that recovery is real? because you're all so much smarter than most Americans are about this. The fact that recovery happens for people with even the most severe mental illnesses, for some reason, is kind of a secret still in the United States. But for decades, we in this room have known that people recover, that they reclaim their lives, that they enjoy happiness and success in their lives, and that no matter how ill somebody is to today, no matter how symptomatic they look, odds are great that they're going to recover. And we know this because the data proves it. And, and I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of studies that have been done in Iowa and in Maine and in Vermont and across Europe and in Asia that show that recovery is real. Because all of you know, we in this room have the lived experience of that. We've seen it. We all have friends and relatives and clients and colleagues and children and spouses and neighbors and co-workers who have recovered from mental illness. And we celebrate their success here today. We also know people who are still in the process of recovering. And we are here to encourage them and to celebrate their path and their journey so far. So what does it take to recover from mental illness? It's really pretty simple. It takes time and it takes support. It takes peers and role models. And it takes services that we know today how to do, if we're committed to doing them, and if we're funded to do those kinds of services. And it takes all of us here today to stand up for recovery, not just as a slogan, but really as a way of life. We need to stand up for funding for services that our brothers and sisters and friends and coworkers and neighbors need to achieve recovery, because they deserve that. We need to stand up for jobs and for supported employment services and supported education services for the 90% of people with serious mental illness who are unemployed today because they deserve better than that. They deserve real jobs and a real career. We need to stand up for housing for people with serious mental illnesses who are homeless, who are in personal care homes, who are in institutions and jails and prisons and make that real for them because they deserve it. We need to stand up for integrating health care into the mental health system because we all know that the lives of people with serious mental illnesses on average are 25 years shorter than the general population and that is shameful in a country like this. They deserve better. We need to stand up for a Medicaid system that's designed to do more than just save money but that's designed to deliver better care to more people because all of the citizens of the Commonwealth deserve that. We need to stand up for an end to discrimination and to stigma that keeps people with mental illness on the margins of society. They deserve better than that. And we need to stand up and demand that people with serious mental illnesses have the same rights, the same opportunities as every other American because all of us deserve a country that's like that. Now, Kentucky. In Kentucky, we've got a lot of standing up to do. You know, we're, we're behind the nation when it comes to most measures of quality and access for mental health services. We consistently get poor grades from every national group that wants to rate the states. Uh, the Kaiser Family Foundation recently have ranked us as the 44th out of 50th states for spending per capita on mental health services. National Alliance uh, on Mental Illness in their last state ranking gave Kentucky a grade of F, one of only six states to receive that honor. Okay? And in that same NAMI report, they looked at state spending on mental health, and, and here in Kentucky, we spend less than 50% of the national average per capita on mental health services. Uh, uh, but, oh, by the way, we spend more of that money on institutional care than almost any other state. You know, we've got work to do here in Kentucky. 
we've got a lot to do to make this the kind of a mental health system that we know it needs to be. And we can do better. We all in this room deserve better than that. If recovery is going to be real, if it's going to be an expectation, the way that every state and the federal government have said that it is, we need to do better. You know, recovery really is in reach. We can do this if we're committed to it and we fund it. And as I look around the room, and, and it is a remarkable gathering here today. I mean, this is the mental health system of the 21st century. We've got providers and family members and public administrators and educators and volunteers and bunches and bunches of consumers from the system all standing together today for recovery. And if we're all here together today to make this real, I know that we can make it happen. I have confidence that we can make this happen, that we can make recovery accessible to everybody, even in Kentucky, as tough as things are today. So I'm proud to be with you here today. I'm proud to celebrate our successes, and I'm proud to be here with you to start a process of organizing so that we can do even better. I'm proud to stand up for recovery with each and every one of you. I want to thank you all for being here today. It's going to be a great day. I want to thank again our sponsors and our presenters. You're really in for a wonderful next few hours. Uh, have a wonderful day, and it's great to be here with you.